Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the latest on the new mask guidelines from the CDC, how the city plans to follow those new recommendations. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 70 degrees this morning. Yesterday was a whirlwind of weather. We're going to check in with Justin Horn for what you can expect for the rest of the weekend and the rest of your week. Good morning, 6 o'clock this Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us. May 16th, yesterday, went to lunch, pouring went to sleep, tried to go to sleep. The sun came out. I was like, I know. I actually really enjoyed that. Mm. I mean, it was mm. your birthday, so you got it. It was good. It was <laughs> nice. It was set to be a nice lazy Saturday and then poof, Justin Horn. Are sun we going to have the same thing happen today? A little sun time or no? What I think we? so. I think it's going to be similar in the sense that we'll have some periods of rain, then the sun comes out. It's just uh, just kind of the way it's setting up. Now, as we get into next week, we're talking about some big time storms too. So there's a lot happening in this forecast. So let's first start with the radar. We have some showers and storms out there at this hour, some just west of Del Rio and then some here around San Antonio. Let's zoom in a little bit closer to Bear County. Still some lightning strikes. If you're up on the north side, Stone Oak, seeing a thunderstorm moving through there right now. It's going to be a little loud. These are not severe storms, though. It's just some good rain. We've got another cluster of storms down there around Pearsall and Divine. A little closer look, though. Stronger cell there on the western side of Bear County. Again, not severe, but you're going to get uh, some decent rain out of that and some lightning strikes. And then further down I-35, Pearsall, you're seeing a pretty good storm right now. Lots of lightning strikes with this storm. Everything's moving east. And again, it'll drop some pretty decent rainfall totals, I think, this morning. Here's what the forecast looks like. A decent chance of showers and storms this morning. And then just scattered stuff this afternoon. 40% chance will top out in the low 80s yet again. And the seven-day forecast is littered with rain chances. We're going to talk more about that forecast, get you set for your work week coming up here in just a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Justin. New this morning, San Antonio police and crime stoppers asking for your help trying to find a person responsible for murder. So take a look at your screen, see if you recognize the vehicle. Now this is it. Police tell us the victim, 31 year old Gary Smith, was sitting in his vehicle that was parked. That's when he was shot and killed when this Nissan Altima pulled up behind him started shooting. Officers say it happened Wednesday, May 5th, just before 645 p.m. at the Oak Manor Apartments. That's near Austin Highway on the city's northeast side. If you have any information that can help police or can lead to any tip in the investigation, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. Turning now to the latest mass guidance from the CDC. According to the CDC, people who are fully vaccinated may choose not to wear a mask both indoors and outdoors. The city of San Antonio is taking steps to comply. Starting tomorrow, city facilities will no longer be conducting temperature checks. Masks and social distancing will also be optional only for those who are fully vaccinated. Signs will be posted on buildings reminding people masks are still required for those who are not vaccinated. However, it's unclear how that will be enforced. And obviously with the new mask guidance, there are some questions. The CDC's new recommendations getting a lot of mixed reviews. Most fully vaccinated Americans are thrilled to take off the face coverings, but still some business owners and healthcare workers say it is too soon. Masks are still required when traveling on planes, trains, or buses, as well as in travel hubs like airports. ABC's Karina Mitchell has a story. The CDC's new guidance saying those who are fully vaccinated can ditch the mask in most cases has some people celebrating. Everybody's been waiting for this moment for a while now. And others confused. Last week they tell you everybody must wear a mask and now two days later they're saying take off your mask. I don't trust any of it. Fully vaccinated parent Chris Koenig says he's keeping his mask on in public until his six and four year old children are vaccinated. And it's tough to explain to the kids as well how we can take our masks off, but they have to keep them on. And parents Fatima and Nicholas Diaz keeping their masks on too. If I'm going into a store, I'm wearing a mask. If I get out of my car, I'm wearing a mask. Is that for your own safety or is that to set an example for your son? Both. At least 19 of the 24 states that had mask mandates have announced plans to adopt the CDC guidance or scrap mask requirements entirely. Major companies like Walmart, Costco, Trader Joe's and Starbucks making masks optional for fully vaccinated customers. More than 156 million Americans have received at least one dose of the vaccine, but still nearly two thirds of the country is not yet fully vaccinated. Businesses and the essential workers running them have expressed concern about enforcing the new rules. If you think that somebody may get aggressive about a mask, just wait till you ask them whether or not they've been vaccinated. 
While figuring out who's vaccinated and who's not remains a concern, health experts warn people who aren't vaccinated who ditch the mask are taking a big risk. By not wearing a mask and not having a vaccine, they don't have the protection if someone else in that environment has COVID and could spread it to them. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, the Israeli military says it has targeted the home of Gaza's top Hamas leader. So this comes after nearly a week of heavy airstrikes and rockets into Israel. An army spokesman says the highest leader of Hamas is likely hiding in Gaza. Hamas and the Islamic Jihad militant group have reported 20 soldiers dying since the fighting started just last Monday. Well, the operator for the Colonial Pipeline says it has resumed normal operations and is now delivering millions of gallons of fuel per hour. The nation's largest pipeline warned it could take several days for the supply chain to return to normal. In a tweet, the company said it has resumed service to its markets, including the East Coast. Meantime, many gas stations on the East Coast continue to lack in fuel. And a nine-month-old tiger missing in Houston for nearly a week has been found safe. Authorities say it appeared to be unharmed. Police tell us that the tiger was turned over to officers by the owner's wife, Victor Hugo Cuevas. The owner was arrested facing charges of evading arrest for allegedly leaving his home with the tiger. All of this happening after officers had responded to a call about a dangerous animal. The big cat's name is... India and is now at the city's animal shelter. India will be taken to a wildlife sanctuary near Dallas later today. And for more details, you can read all about this story. Just head to ksat.com. We've had like a lot of weird stories a, regarding tigers. A lot days. of weird tiger stories. Yeah. Well, glad he's safe. Yes. Just about 6.07, 70 degrees out. Well, Viva Fiesta San Antonio because of the changes this year. Fiesta wants everyone to celebrate. Still ahead, how you can get involved in this year's porch parade. Plus, well, SeaWorld and Aquatica want fully vaccinated guests to enjoy the parks as much as possible. So after the break, we're going to explain the new guidelines that are now in place. Take out. Look outside with live cam, 70 degrees. I can't tell if it's drizzling or not. I know I had some rain when I was coming in. <gasps> Justin said you're going to have some showers throughout the day. He'll have our full Sunday forecast when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. In the aftermath of the CDC's new guidance on masks, if you are fully vaccinated, you will not be required to wear a mask if you head to SeaWorld or Aquatica. The changes come after the CDC eased its mask wearing guidelines for those vaccinated against the virus. Park officials say the parks won't require proof of vaccination, but they are asking guests respectfully to comply with the new policy. Meantime, all park employees will be required to wear face masks. That's right. So if you are not fully vaccinated, you still need to wear that face mask out in public and continue to social distance. If you recall when you said uh, when you walked into work, you saw some drizzle. I was snickering a little bit laughing because I only beat you here by a little bit and I didn't it's see any not rain. Fair. I, you know, I spent time with my hair and makeup and I walk out. <laughs> It was, I, I got a good shower, but it, of course, stopped. It's one of those on and off showers. That's how it works, especially this time of year. It's going to be this hit or miss stuff. Yesterday, it was, it was fairly persistent early in the day, but as you guys mentioned, the sun came out during the afternoon. Here's the setup right now. Showers and storms out there. Some of those tracking through uh, San Antonio, as Sarah mentioned, and uh, they're dying down just a little bit. We had some lightning strikes earlier, so it may have been a little loud for you. We're also watching going on out west of Del Rio. That's more energy that will be tracking through today. So we'll keep rain in the forecast. Let's look a little closer though at Bear County. And you can see the showers and storms actually dying down some. We had some pretty good looking storms earlier. Now just a few lightning strikes left over some showers, but the roads are wet. Be careful out there if you're going to be uh, traveling this morning. Nice little pocket of heavier rain on the east side. Same story up around Cibolo shirts, seeing some rain. Had a nice pocket of rain earlier around the Alamo Ranch area, but that has since died down. This is all moving east and northeast of Leon Valley. You're still seeing some showers at this hour. And then down along I-35, pretty nice thunderstorm here, stretching from Moore down to Pearsall, seeing quite a few lightning strikes with this activity as it uh, moves off to the east as well. So uh, as we go outside for you, Here's what you can expect today. Shower storms, some heavy rain in spots. We saw some decent rainfall totals yesterday. This afternoon, 
Storms at East Divide 35 for the most part. So that's where we're going to center, uh, I think, most of the activity today. And then Monday and Tuesday, we'll be watching for some severe weather. The setup is there that we could see some stronger storms. Outside right now, we've got 70 degrees, some rain coming down at the airport, calm winds, and the temperatures in the 60s and 70s. 71 New Braunfels, 67 Comfort, 67 in Bandera, 64 Rock Springs, 72 right now in Del Rio, and two points are in the 60s and 70s. So as you may have noticed, it is extremely humid outside. Here is the setup across the state. Notice that it's fairly active. We've got showers and a few storms lining up from the Texas Panhandle all the way down into our neck of the woods. And there's a little disturbance that's tracking through. So this is what we'll be watching today. That'll give us some scattered showers and storms. Again, especially east of I-35. And then behind that, you'll notice there's a spin in the atmosphere over California. This is going to be moving in Tuesday. And I think that probably gives us our, gives us our best chance for storms and maybe some severe weather. So here's what the forecast looks like by 2 o'clock. We've got showers and maybe a cluster of storms here along the uh, Texas coast. This is where there could be some heavy rain today. We'll still keep a chance in the forecast around San Antonio, but it'll be hit or miss. And then as we get into Monday, maybe a, a break in the action before we get more showers and storms on Tuesday. This is Tuesday, 7 o'clock. We'll be watching what uh, is happening out west, and we could get a line of storms by Tuesday afternoon. This is where we could see severe weather and also some pockets of heavy rain. The rainfall potential over the next seven days looks like we could see some flash flooding. It's just hard to pinpoint when and where that may happen. Uh, we're talking about five to seven inches in some cases here. That's that orange color you see. And that, that does show Bear County in that range. Now, I don't know that everyone's going to see five to seven inches, but if we do, there will be some flooding issues. Forecast for today, if you're heading out the door this morning, grab the umbrella, 60% chance of showers and storms, but we taper that off to a 40% chance noontime. And I think by the late evening hours, it'll probably be east of San Antonio. 20% chance of rain tomorrow, but a 70% chance Tuesday, 60% chance Wednesday. There is that severe potential along with some heavy rain, and it doesn't end there. We've got more showers and storms Thursday, Friday, into Saturday. So what a busy pattern we are in, guys. All right, Justin Horn, thank you so much. We actually have some breaking news right into our newsroom. Happening right now, San Antonio police responding to a major crash with possible death. Officers were called out to the Loop 1604 West at Blanco Road. Alicia Bonetta is live near the scene of the crash. Alicia, what do you know so far? Well, we can tell you this accident is definitely a fatality. Uh, just right down the road from where I'm standing, we can see a body bag still on the ground. In the middle of the eastbound lanes right now, all traffic is being diverted off of the highway at this point. So if you have any plans to head in this direction, Stone Oak area off 1604 in Blanco, just know you're going to need a little extra time as the highway on the eastbound lanes are closed. This crash we know involves two vehicles, a sedan and a white truck. That white Chevy truck has a lot, a lot of damage on the front end. Later on this morning, we'll try to move a little bit closer so we can see more of the damage on the other vehicle involved. At this time, we haven't been able to speak to police. We literally arrived here just minutes ago. Therefore, it's not clear yet exactly what led to this accident, um, who that person who died here on the scene is. We'll, of course, be uh, wanting to get in contact with police here on the scene to bring you that information. But again, what we know right now, it, this crash, this fatal accident involves two vehicles, a white truck, and then um, a, a sedan. And of course, right now we're still waiting on official information from police. But again, what I can tell you is that we did see a body bag on those eastbound lanes. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Alicia. We're going to be checking in with her throughout the morning as well. 616, 71 degrees out. Well, Dave Bautista leads a group of mercenaries on a heist into a zombie infested Las Vegas. Whoa, that's a Sunday oh, read. Okay. <laughs> Look at Army of the Dead after the break. Welcome back. Director Zack Snyder's latest movie sends a group of mercenaries into a zombie infested Las Vegas on a high stakes heist. There's a lot to unfold with this yeah. one. All right, CNN's Rick Damagella has a look at the Army of the Dead. Well, we all know the basics. Zombies, shamblers, the undead, whatever you want to call them. When it comes to killing them, it's all about the brain. Seems simple enough, except when the zombies have overrun Las Vegas and there's a vault of money to be scavenged in Army of the Dead. 
Dave Bautista's character has deeper motivations than survival or profit. When I read the script, that's what I really dialed in on. That's what I really focused on was really um, what was at the core of this character. Uh, and it really was redemption. Scott Ward was looking for a redemption uh, with his daughter. He was looking for a way back you know, to his normal life to get back on, you know, on track with living a life with his family, what family he had left. And so that's what it was, and everything else was just kind of a backdrop. They're not what you think they are. They're smarter. They're faster. Army of the Dead marks director Zack Snyder's return to zombie cinema, but with a new spin. And one of the things I was just really, I really wanted to see if it was possible for the audience to be sympathetic with the zombies. And frankly, Rich Citron, who plays uh, Zeus in the movie, does such a incredible job that you can see how you know there might be a faction of the audience that is really v voting for the zombies to, to pull it out on this one what is this it's a zombie tiger that's crossing the line repelling zombies in hollywood i'm rick damagella that's tiger story number two today <laughs> zombie tiger we can't get rid of the zombies <laughs> 622 71 degrees out all right, it's almost time for Fiesta San Antonio. After the break, how you can join the Fiesta Porch Parade celebration. All right, so check this out. A scary experience for some theme park lovers. Arizona firefighters rescued nearly oh. two dozen people stuck on a roller coaster. They were on the Desert Storm ride at Castles and Coasters when the cars got stalled about 20 feet in the air. Firefighters used ladders and harnesses to get all 22 people down. No one was injured. Well, that's a lot of people's biggest fear. Oh my gosh, I know. All right, well, time to talk Fiesta since there will not be a Battle of Flowers Parade or Fiesta Flambeau Parade this year. Fiesta still wants everyone to participate in a new event, Fiesta Porch Parade. Yeah, I'm excited about this. The virtual event is a citywide decorating competition for homes, schools, and businesses. It runs until next Monday, May 24th. So right now on KSET.com, you can submit your decorations to enter to win prizes and Fiesta bragging rights. Of course, so there are going to be seven winners, and they're going to be announced on Friday, June 18th, during KSAT's Fiesta special. Got to say, some people have tagged me in some of their porch decorations on social media. Really good stuff out there. I know, and I decorated, but then I was like, oh, yeah, I decorated, and then I saw other people's. Yeah, like, step it up a little bit. I got to step it up. <laughs> Time now, 626, 71 degrees out. A Trinity University graduate is helping Latino students have a better education still ahead. How she plans on doing just that. And while the Colonial Pipeline is back up and running, experts say it's still going to be a few days before fuel levels are back to normal. And still to come, we're going to explain the supply chain and how it's still impacting people at the pump. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. It is May 16th. Thank you so much for joining us yesterday. Or yesterday, today, today. yesterday. <laughs> Whew, it's Sunday, Sunday fun day. No, yesterday though, a whirlwind with weather. Yeah. On and off storms, on and off showers. And this morning, you got hit with some rain. I got hit with some rain, um, but I enjoyed that, Justin. Like yesterday, you had that period of like lazy couch time, and mm -hmm. the sun came out, Perfect. and you're able to go walk outside, do whatever you needed to do. Exactly. I mean, the evening was fantastic. And, you know, that's what we do around here. We go drought, 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 and then we flip the switch, and it feels like it's rain every day now. That's what we're going to be dealing with probably over the next seven days. Radar is pretty lit up this morning, although I'll tell you, there's not any severe weather. This is just good rain, but you may hear some thunder. You may see a lightning strike here or there. That's the uh, kind of pattern we're in. And you can see some showers and storms working their way through Bear County and San Antonio at this hour. Moving towards Seguin, we've got another little patch of some pretty good rain uh, down around Pearsall and then more developing out to the west of Del Rio. So we'll zoom in a little bit closer here to San Antonio. If you're on the northwest side, the rain for the most part is ended, but still seeing some moderate rain live oak converse and then stretching down to Elmendorf and then a nice little cell here north of Lavernia, far northeastern Bear County. That'll move up towards the Seguin area within the next 30 to 45 minutes. So be prepared for some heavier rain there. Uh, just east of Pearsall, seeing a nice cell, lightning strikes, uh, quite a few of them within that storm as it moves south and east. Charlotte, you're about to get some rain there. And then out west, some light rain around Del Rio, another little cell west of you. Tells us there's still some energy out there. And, and temperatures are in the 70s. It's going to be a mild, humid day, mostly cloudy. Temperatures are right around 70 for most of us. And the forecast calls for a decent chance of rain this morning. We'll taper that off a little bit 
as we get towards the noon hour. Best chance of showers and storms today will be east of I-35, and there's more on the way. We'll talk about the rainfall potential and the threat for some flash flooding next week. That's coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, thank you so much, Justin. Late breaking news this morning in the city's north side. San Antonio police investigating a deadly crash. Officers responded to the North Loop 1604 West at Blanco Road early this morning for that two vehicle accident. Alicia Breda is live from the scene. Alicia, what do we know so far? Well, right now at this hour, it, all traffic is still being diverted. Drivers are still able to get on the ramp after Blanco. So again, if you're headed on 1604 this morning, know that around the area of Blanco Road, you are going to be diverted. We know that this crash, this fatal crash involves two vehicles. You can see that white truck a little bit better. Um, we promised to move up that way we could get a better look of damages, but we can't get too close. Um, as again, this does involve a fatality and that body is still unfortunately front and center there. So we want to be mindful of that. But again, this involves a white truck. It looks like it's a Chevy, a lot of damage to the front and then right to the right of it right next to it is a sedan. Uh, we're not clear on what happened. We're still waiting to speak to police. As you can tell right now, it's pretty active. Officers still surveying the area to see exactly what factors led to this accident. Um, but it's hard to tell from where I'm standing what damage that other little car sustained. So again, we're, we're standing by to see, uh, to hear from police and see what happened, what information they can also give us of about that uh, fatal victim. No other people right now on the scene of those involved in this crash. It's unclear exactly what time this happened, but it's easy to say police have, uh, have definitely been here for more than an hour now. So the biggest thing, this is obviously going to affect drivers as this is a fatal investigation. So there's a lot to do here. So again, if you're headed in this area, lots of patience. Max, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. Well, new this morning, a man is in critical condition after he was hit by a car overnight. It happened in the 8500 block of South Presa Street just before 140 this morning. Police tell us the man and his girlfriend were arguing at a bar. That's when he left. Officers say the woman and several of her friends got into a car to look for the man. Police say at some point the driver lost control of the vehicle and the passenger grabbed the wheel. That's when police say the car ran into the man and a guardrail. The man was taken to a hospital and is in critical condition. Meantime, the driver was arrested and is facing intoxication assault charges. Now to the latest from yesterday. San Antonio police are still looking for a suspect who shot at a woman outside the Alma Women's Reproductive Services Office. So this all happened around 830 in the morning yesterday at the office near the intersection of Wurzbach and Babcock. This is all in the northwest side. Police tell us the man and woman showed up to the facility together. Police then say the suspect pulled out a gun and actually shot towards her. He missed, but then a person who was with a group of protesters near the clinic saw the shooting happen, used his own gun to fire at that suspect. Police then tell us the protester had a license to carry the pistol, and when the shots rang out, the suspect actually ran off. So luckily, no injuries reported. Right now, though, police still investigating, still searching for that first suspect. Well, now to the fuel crunch along the East Coast, easing, but not everywhere. Nearly 80% of gas stations in Washington, D.C. are out of fuel. That's right. As ABC's Elwin Lopez reports, in the wake of that pipeline cyber attack, industry experts say it's still going to take some time for things to get back to normal. Even with that massive pipeline back up and running, experts warning some drivers might still have a hard time finding fuel at the pump. It'll be a few weeks before every gas station has gasoline, so two to three weeks, especially in the hard hit areas. Colonial Pipeline now flowing, delivering millions of gallons of fuel, but it only flows at five miles an hour. Officials assuring Americans the end of that gas crunch, crippling much of the East Coast, is now in sight. Gas station outages are down about 12 percent from the peak so it's still going to work its way through the system over the next few days but we should be back to normal fairly soon with supply trickling in parts of the country still feeling the pinch in washington dc nearly 80 percent of gas stations still without fuel more gas stations are closed than i thought they would be so i've gone up and down and was lucky to find this one the ransomware attack on the colonial pipeline which triggered the shortage raised the alarm among cybersecurity experts. 
In an op-ed posted to CNBC, the Secretaries of Homeland Security and Commerce warning this latest attack should serve as a clarion call for organizations across the country to shore up their cyber defenses and get ahead of future threats. A recent report found that there's been an increase, a 300 percent increase in the amount of money paid in these types of attacks since 2019. And experts warn that last year alone, nearly 2,400 U.S. government agencies, schools and healthcare facilities were targeted by ransomware attacks. Alwyn Lopez, ABC News, Atlanta. In your consumer news, Coca-Cola saying goodbye to its Coke energy drink. It's being discontinued in North America just over a year after it launched. Coach Coke Energy hit stores only a few weeks before the coronavirus pandemic began. The company says COVID-19 altered its business strategy for the drink. Now Coca-Cola plans to focus on the drinks that are selling well, including its caffeinated sparkling water and traditional sodas. Happening today, you might need to adjust your commute if you're out and about across the Alamo City. Several parts of Stone Oak Parkway closed for asphalt paving. This is all according to TxDOT. You can find a full list of this weekend's traffic closures by TxDOT. Just head to KSAT.com. Also happening today, the first annual Southside Book Fair mm -hmm. kicks off today. It runs from 11 this morning until 3 this afternoon. It will showcase up to 20 award-winning authors from the Southside and throughout Texas. The authors will also be autographing and selling their books. If you're interested in attending, the book fair will be hosted by Brewster's Backyard Ice House, located at 815 Pleasanton Road. Every Sunday, we have our leading essay segment. We speak with leaders of our community about current issues. And today at 8 a.m., Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar will be joining us live. So today on Leading SA, we are set to talk about the most recent crime trends in our area, specific targets, what the last year has looked like, and what comes next. So if you have any questions that you would like asked, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com or on our social media pages. Then join us at 8 a.m. See if your question gets asked. Time now is just about 639, 71 degrees out. Oh, still ahead on GMSA history, decades in the making. Tim Duncan officially a Hall of Famer. Hear from the Spurs legend and his emotional speech. And next in our great graduate series, a Trinity University grad helping the Latino community having a better education after the break. Why helping the community is so important to Diana Long. 71 degrees, looks like the sun is starting to peek through those clouds at 639 this morning. Justin says on enough showers today, he'll have Sunday's forecast and the rest of the week will come back. Well, Diana Long is using everything she learned at Trinity University to help the Latino community have a better education. In today's edition of our College Great Graduate Series, we introduce you to Diana and show you why helping the Latino community is so important for her. I was uh, conducting research on school finance, just trying to find better ways to fund our school districts, especially uh, in how to support English learners. That's how Diana Long spent the summer before her senior year at Trinity University. She comes from immigrant parents who do not know English, which was clearly a challenge. I realized just how much they've been through all these years, leaving their country couldn't have been easy, um, and then coming to a place where Sometimes they're just not welcomed. Um, and just seeing how much uh, I've accomplished and how proud I've made them is just, I don't know, it's really, really rewarding. But I'm extremely proud of her, not only because of everything she has accomplished, but because of everyone that she represents, who she represents. Her goal is to help others just like her. So she's working on research to find different ways to close the educational gap for the Hispanic community, who she says are falling behind. She's graduating from Trinity, but that's not where she's stopping. And I mean, she's going to continue to do great things for herself, for others, for her community, and for our students and profession. Diana says she wants all struggling students to know they can do anything they put their minds to. I want to be remembered for having that resilience and, and overcoming barriers, but also just as a person that, um, as a person that never forget where she came from and appreciates the sacrifices of her family and her ancestors as well. Such an amazing story. I love all of our great graduates, college great graduates, high school great graduates, such amazing stories. Yeah, congratulations to everyone graduating. And 
I don't think there's any graduations happening today. Well, no. it's Sunday, but yeah. Justin, I mean, there's probably going to be a lot of graduation parties and events happening throughout the week, and we're going to have a rainy next seven days, right? It's uh, very true. So we're going to have to kind of plan around that, I think. Tuesday is the day I want to watch because I think we may get some severe weather on that day. Oh. But really, any day this week, there is potential for some rain, and that includes this morning. The radar is fairly lit up. The good news is we don't have severe weather out there, at least not at the moment. We're not expecting a lot today. But some good downpours here and there. We are seeing some lightning strikes this morning, so maybe a little bit loud where you are. Showers and storms working through San Antonio at this hour, seeing just light to moderate rain. Basically, eastern half of the city, rain's coming down. Some heavier showers and storms up there around Selma and Shirts, and then west in New Braunfels. Seeing some activity there. We're also getting a nice little cell that's working towards Seguin. It's just about to move in. So you're going to get some heavy rain if you're watching us from Seguin this morning. And notice there are some lightning strikes mixed in there. So it could be a little bit loud for you. And then down to the south, this is one of the stronger cells we've been watching too. Just to the east of Dilly, moving out of Frio County. This is moving south and east towards Fowlerton. If you're in Charlotte, you're about to get some good rain there too. And then also out west, Del Rio, seeing some light rain. And one cell there in Mexico. Probably going to stay uh, to the west of Del Rio. It's actually moving southeast at this point. Uh, Eagle Pass, also a little bit of rain uh, there. So uh, looking at the rainfall totals, these are just estimates, okay? But we know that we did get five to six inches yesterday in parts of Medina and Uvalde County. So there was some very heavy rain yesterday afternoon. And then we saw that pocket of heavier rain move through western parts of Bear County this morning. Now it's estimating about two inches up there. Checked in on some of the rainfall totals. I think that's probably pretty accurate, close to two inches if you're out there on, around Alamo Ranch. Rest of the city, not as much, but uh, the roads are still wet and uh, we're still going to see some more rainfall. We've done really well this month, 11.6 inches now for the year. We are above average for our rainfall, and that's great news. Looks like we'll continue to add to that. Here's a look at the time lapse. Notice we had those showers and storms coming through a little bit earlier. Uh, there were a few lightning strikes even around the airport. 70 degrees right now. South southeasterly winds at about 8 miles per hour. Two points are high. It's extremely humid. 66 Bernie stage, but 70 is elsewhere. I, I think we'll hang right around 70 next couple of hours and then make our way up into the low 80s this afternoon. Two points, as I mentioned. There is no lack of moisture. These storms have plenty of moisture to work with, and there are going to be some pretty heavy rain producers. We have a disturbance that's working through South Texas right now, and that's what's kicking off all this weather. We can see it pretty nicely here on water vapor and that'll move through today and it will start to bring uh, showers and storms mainly east of I-35 I think this afternoon as it tracks through. Behind that, big swirl out over California, that's our next storm system. That's the one that will move through on Tuesday and I mentioned the threat for some severe weather is going to be possible once that uh, makes its way into our area. Here's what the forecast looks like. Uh, by 2 o'clock, Notice the bulk of the activity is east of I-35. There could be some heavier rain setting up along the Texas coast. And then as we get into Monday, I think it quiets down just a little bit. Now, if we saw a storm tomorrow, it would likely go severe, but we're not looking for much. It's on Tuesday that we start to see more showers and storms work in, and this is where we could see some severe weather Tuesday afternoon. We'll be watching it closely. Also, there is a threat for heavy rain. We're already getting some of that. We're likely going to add to it later this week. Some big numbers, three to five inches in some cases, not everywhere, but there could be some pockets. Uh, we've already seen some of that, and that may lead to some flooding. 40% chance of rain this afternoon, temperatures up into the low 80s, and they'll look for a 20% chance of storms tomorrow. 70% though on Tuesday, severe potential, heavy rainfall, and it doesn't end there. More chances Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Busy seven day forecast, guys. Oh, you know what? It's better than being in a drought. That's I true. I like it. Okay, 648 and 71 degrees. All right, we have Pop, Manu, Tony, David Robinson all in attendance for what has been decades in the making. Tim Duncan's Hall of Fame speech. We're going to hear from the Spurs legend after the break. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It is official. It has been decades in the making, and it is here. Spurs legend Tim Duncan, now officially a Hall of Famer, the latest from a franchise that is in Duck Delight of David Robinson, the Admiral, and George Gervin, the Iceman before him, the five-time NBA champ. There he is right there. Signature move. 
Boom! Two-time MVP carving out a memorable career at the center of the Spurs dynasty, retiring as arguably the greatest power forward to ever play the game now. His legacy enshrined forever in the Basketball Hall of Fame along with the rest of the class of 2020 and the first people that Timmy thanked in his speech, his parents. William and I own Duncan. Um, a combined zero basketball knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> but they taught me more about the game than anyone else. Um, you heard the mantra that my mom instilled in me, good, better, best, never let it rest till you're good is better and you're better is your best. They told me and made me uh, have pride in everything I did, be the best at everything I did, be happy with what your role is or where, where you are and try to be the best at that. And I'm here because of them. Amazing. Such an emotional night. Tim Duncan spreading the love to his teammates as well, including the Admiral David Robinson. He actually presented Timmy for enshrinement, but Duncan made special note of that dynamic duo that helped him forge the four of his five titles. Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker, they were up front and personal, and I imagine that we're going to be seeing them at the ceremony in a few years as well. As for the Spurs, not a great day. They kind of got crushed by the Suns. Important to mention, though, Pop was at the ceremony, not at the game. They have one more regular season game left. Silver and Black facing off against the Suns again today. Same location here at home, 1 p.m. I love it. I love it. I know. Oh. You starting to tear up a little bit? I'm not crying. Little, You're crying. Emotional. All right, <laughs> 654, 71 degrees out. We'll be right back. Hey, good morning. Coming up on GMA, overnight the conflict in the Middle East intensified. Israel launched new airstrikes in Gaza, flattening a building, housing major media organizations. How the White House is responding. Plus, the CDC's latest pandemic guidance is causing confusion as states and businesses navigate mask rules. And an eight-month-old baby becomes the youngest in the world to receive a COVID vaccine. And finally, the missing tiger in Texas. Overnight, police announced the animal has been found as this case brings new attention to the rules about owning big cats. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you soon. In the news you need to know before you go, a man is in critical condition after he was hit by a car overnight. It happened in the 8500 block of South Presa Street just before 140 this morning. Police tell us the man and his girlfriend were arguing at a bar. That's when the man left. Officers say the woman and several of her friends got into a car to look for the man. Police say at some point the driver lost control of the vehicle and the passenger grabbed the wheel. The car ran into the man and a guardrail. The man was taken to a hospital and in critical condition. Meantime, the driver was arrested and is facing intoxication assault charges. And San Antonio police and crime stoppers asking for your help trying to find a suspect they believe responsible for murder. Police tell us the victim, 31 year old Gary Smith, was sitting in his parked vehicle. That's when he was shot and killed when this Nissan Altima pulled up behind him, started shooting several times. Officers say this all happened Wednesday, May 5th, just before 645 p.m. at the Oak Manor Apartments. That's near Austin Highway on the city's northeast side. So if you have any information, any leads that can help lead to an arrest, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number 210-224-STOP. And the radar are busy this morning. Showers and storms starting to push east of San Antonio. But if you're watching us from Seguin or New Braunfels, rain's coming down. Some heavier storms south and east of Pearsall also moving into Pleasanton. This will all work its way east throughout the rest of the morning. We still could see some more scattered showers and storms today. About a 40% chance of rain. Temperatures in the low 80s for highs. And a little bit of a break in the action tomorrow. But a better chance of storms on Tuesday. 70% shot. We could see some severe weather. Some heavy rainfall next week stays busy all the way into next weekend. And Justin, before we go, how important is it that we get more rain? I mean, we're we're doing pretty good now. It, it came in buckets yesterday, and I'm, I'm afraid that we're going to see some flash flooding next week. So it's almost too much of a good thing now. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, we'll be here, and make sure you have that KSAT weather app. We'll send you updates that way as well. All right, Thank Justin. You, Justin. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. We are going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. Good We're watching showers and storms around our area this morning. Fairly busy radar. Good news, no severe weather, but we are getting some pretty good rain.
Uh, South Pleasanton there in Atascosa County and then over towards Wilson County. A lot of this starting to move out of San Antonio, but still some wet roads here. We still have some energy off to the west. We'll keep an eye on that. Scattered showers and storms today. Best chances will be east of I-35. We'll top out in the low 80s this afternoon. In the extended forecast, 88 tomorrow, 86 Tuesday with a 70% chance of rain. Good morning, everyone. It is 727. Looking at the radar this morning, pretty busy. We've got some showers and storms out there. Most of this is starting to move out of San Antonio. We still got some wet roads, but the bulk of the activity now moving to the east. Seeing some lightning strikes there in Carnes County as you get south towards uh, parts of Rio County and Atascosa County. Seeing some uh, a good thunderstorm there. Nothing severe, though, and that's the good news. This is mostly just some good rain. Here's what the forecast looks like for today. We'll see a lot of that activity start to move east. So by 2 o'clock, looks like the bulk of the activity will be east of I-35. Tomorrow, we should get a little bit of a break. There could be a storm or two, but the better chance of rain arrives on Tuesday. We could see some severe weather on Tuesday, by the way, along with the threat for some heavy rain. Rainfall potential over the next seven days, we could see some pretty big numbers, three to five inches. Forecast for today, just 40% chance of rain, again, mainly east of I-35. And the extended forecast, a busy seven-day forecast, especially early next week. Rob, thank you. Showers and storms now moving east of San Antonio, so things starting to quiet here. We still have some wet roads. Forecast for today calls for about a 40% chance of rain, mainly east of I-35. And, uh, Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police are investigating a fatal crash that has part of North Loop 1604 West shut down this morning. The details just ahead here on GMSA. Plus, we're talking about the most recent crime trend specific targets and what comes next. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar will be joining us with the answers live in today's leading essay segment. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City. Yesterday was a whirlwind of weather. We had sunshine, we had rain. So what does today look like? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a few moments. But until then, good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, May 16th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. I got to say, I beat you by work, what, about five minutes, five, seven minutes? I don't know. You beat me, so. It was, it was dry when I got here, and, and then you come in I here. I got in a tense little short shower. I, you know, <laughs> I, I started my drive. It was okay. Mm -hmm. By the time I had to get out, I had to cover oh, yeah, up, you were the, all bundled up. Cover up like, the hair and okay. makeup. You okay? But, you know, Justin, um, it was a bit, it was a bunch of different things that happened yesterday, and mm -hmm. I got about, I have a rain gauge at my house. Yep. Almost an inch of rain. Wow, that's that's a good amount. You know, the, there were some varied amounts yesterday with some of the showers and storms that came through. We're going to see a similar setup today. It's a hit or miss type thing, but we did get some rain this morning here in San Antonio, and we've got some heavier downpours now to the south and east of town. I think here in town we're going to get a break for a while, so if you have plans to be out, know that the roads are wet, but we're probably not going to see any downpours, at least for a while. The heavier storms now south of town, south of Pleasanton, and there you can see San Antonio doing just fine. Still some light rain there on the far east side of Bear County. Now, if you're in Carn City, it's loud right now. Showers and storms, nothing severe, but you are going to get some good rain along uh, Highway 181 there, and that's going to continue to move east southeast. Another nice looking cell just north of Fowlerton, moving towards Tilden. That's slowly working its way south and east, and this one's going to dump quite a bit of rain. So there could be some street flooding in those areas. And then back off towards the west, light rain in Del Rio. Storms out in Mexico, but so far they are staying there. And uh, temperature-wise, right around 70 degrees here in town. Lots of clouds, obviously. 68 Bernie Stage, 68 out in Tarpley, and uh, 73 right now in Katua. Forecast for today, we're going to keep some rain chances in there, although I think the best chance will be east of I-35, about a 40% shot. Temperatures, low 80s. And we're looking for more rain down the line. Some storms, especially on Tuesday. We'll detail that forecast here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Something we've been covering throughout the morning. The city's north side, there was a crash. All lanes north 1604 Loop West at Blanco had to be shut down for several hours. Authorities responding to a deadly crash. Alicia Benetta has been at the scene all morning long. She joins us live now. Alicia, do you have any updates from police? 
Well, authorities managed to clean up the scene in less than three hours, but the investigation is far from over. Really, it's only beginning. We still are waiting on official confirmation of what happened, but here's what we saw when we've been here uh, throughout the morning. Earlier, we had mentioned that two vehicles were involved. However, the sedan that was here earlier drove off about an hour or so ago, signaling it may have not been directly linked to the fatal accident. It's the white truck that had a lot of damage to the front end, but it's unclear what led to the crash. Here at the scene, we saw the body of the victim just a couple of feet in front of that white truck. That white truck has been towed away. Investigators continued with taking measurements throughout the morning and, of course, surveying the area for any evidence that will help them piece this scene together. During our time here, no driver was in sight, and at this hour, still no information on who that fatal victim is. All we know is that one person died here on the scene early this morning and was transported to the medical examiner's just uh, medical examiner's office just a few moments ago. The scene is now clear. The highway is open once again. Again, it was closed off for about three hours, but investigators here at the scene have done their job, so drivers are able to make their way through. Max, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. Well, a man was also hit by a car early this morning in the 8500 block of South Presa Street around 1.40 a.m. Police tell us the man and his girlfriend were arguing at a bar. That's when he left. Officers say the woman and several of her friends got into a car to look for the man. Police say at some point the driver lost control of the vehicle and the passenger grabbed the wheel. The car then ran into the man and a guardrail. The man was taken to a hospital and is in critical condition. The driver was arrested and is facing intoxication assault charges. San Antonio police asking for your help trying to find a suspect responsible for the death of 31 year old Gary Smith. So take a look. The incident happened back on May 5th at the Oak Manor Apartments on Austin Highway. Police tell us Smith was sitting in his parked vehicle when a Nissan Ultima pulled up behind him. That's when someone inside the Nissan started firing several gunshots, killing Smith. Anyone with any information is urged to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. You could be eligible for a reward of up to $5,000. Well, members of an east side church community gathered this weekend to say guns have no place on their streets. The advocacy group Moms Demand Action joined forces with the Stop in the Name of Love movement for a rally at the Greater Faith Institutional Church. Their goal to promote gun safety awareness. The Stop in the Name of Love movement actually formed as an effort to end gun violence in response to a February 7th shooting that happened at that exact church. Gun violence has become a part of our daily lives and we need to work together to find the best solutions to prevent that and to make San Antonio safer. San Antonio Police Chief William McMahon McManus also attended the rally saying, although violent crimes have taken a dip, the dangers associated with gun violence are still very much a threat to everyone. He says there needs to be a combined effort between communities and law enforcement to keep violent crimes on the low. And speaking of crimes in our area, every Sunday we have our leading essay segment. We speak to leaders of our community about some of the most timely issues impacting families in our area. Joining us in today's leading essay segment is Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar. Good morning, Sheriff. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me on. What are some of the most recent crime trends that you guys are seeing? Well, we're actually seeing a slight up uptick in violent crimes out in unincorporated Bear County. But we're, we're uh, combating it in some, some new and innovative ways, uh, very much intelligence-led policing. But we're reorganizing around organized crime, and we brought back our uniform gang unit. Well, Sheriff, in terms of BCSO, y'all have appeared very transparent about the arrest of deputies. So what is your message to the community when they see members of your team getting into trouble with the law? Well, and, and I remind my deputies that really all that's being asked of us of society is just be better at your job, be transparent with your job and hold each other accountable, hold yourselves accountable. And, and definitely they demand of me to hold my people accountable. That's what we've been doing all along. And so what's being asked of us now is nothing new. Uh, and so, you know, I'm, I'm very, very proud to, to lead the charge uh, in that effort. Now, there is a bill making its way through the Texas legislature that would allow permitless carry. Now, it's facing an obstacle in the Texas House, but... And if it stays, uh, if it continues to go through, uh, have you guys been staying on top of it, you know, looking at what that means for you? And if so, what are some of the challenges that that would pose? Well, I mean, yes, I've got a legislative liaison uh, deputy that, that oversees those sorts of things. He's tracking that bill. 
uh, with a lot of interest. You know, I just can't see the reasoning behind wanting more guns on the street, especially when they're in the hands of unlicensed folks, untrained folks, and unidentified folks. We just don't know who's going to be carrying a gun out there. Uh, and, and that presents a lot of problems for law enforcement. And Sheriff, are there any specific crimes your office is trying to crack down and focusing on? And if so, what should people be watching out for? Yes, we're, we're really concentrating our efforts on organized crime, trying to stop the folks that are benefiting from this crime being out there. So we're asking people to watch out for drug activity, human trafficking type activity, uh, illegal gambling operations. And we're asking them to call our organized crime group at 210-335-GANG, 210-335-GANG, and uh, let us know about it. You can remain anonymous and you can call in on any location anywhere in the county, even if it's in one of the incorporated areas we're going to target it. Fantastic. Now, this weekend, Peace Officers Memorial Day. So do you have any special words to honor those who have served our community? Just uh, thank you for your service, uh, whether you're military or a first responder. Uh, thank you for your continued service. And we want the public to know that we very much appreciate the support that we first responders uh, have here with our community. We've got a very unique uh, connection, which when, when other people, other first responders from other parts of the country come here, they make note of the fact that it's a very, uh, very interesting and very supportive relationship. And so just thank the community for their continued support of us. Well, Sheriff, thank you so much for taking your time to join us this morning. And our viewers, they can watch this full interview on KSAT.com later this morning. Thank you, Sheriff. Bye-bye. Time now is just about 810, 71 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA. A local cafe is filling more than customers' bellies. We'll show you how the heartfelt note someone left behind for employees at Comfort Cafe. Plus, an Air Force pilot and his daughter guiding him in to his last ride. We're going to give you a look at a special moment that he shared with his family. And getting into the fiesta spirit from the comfort of your own home will tell you how to enter the first ever porch parade contest. Whoa, you got a head start. I did. The rain though, melting mm. those decorations. <laughs> We're gonna check in with Justin Horn for your full forecast in just a bit. Well, since there will not be a Battle of Flowers parade and Fiesta Flambeau parade this year, San Antonio is having a porch parade. That's right. So it is a virtual event, citywide decorating competition for homes, schools, even businesses. It started April 23rd, but you have until May 24th to get involved. Right now on KSAT.com, you can submit pictures of your decorations. You can win prizes and, of course, Fiesta bragging rights. We're going to announce seven winners on Friday, June 18th all during KSAT's Fiesta Special. I want to see pictures of the porch you've decorated. Okay, it's it's very simple. <laughs> it's a homemade wreath that I made and okay. just, you know some regular uh, banners, but I was really concerned, Justin, because about putting like certain like piñatas or any paper materials out because they'll just be washed away. I mean, that's that's a fair concern. <laughs> you know, I, I, your porch is still intact though, right? I yeah, mean, my porch is still intact. <laughs> Still doing okay. Yeah, the, the rain was a little heavy this morning, so you may have to move some of those decorations inside. It's going to be a fairly wet week, I'll warn you there, as we go forward in time. But here's the situation right now. Showers and storms pushing south and east of San Antonio. The threat is over here in town. The rain, for the most part, is over, but we still have wet conditions, damp conditions out there. If you're heading out the door for church this morning, everything looks just fine. You may not even need the umbrella. Uh, but if you're watching us from Gonzales, or down towards Fowlerton, that's where the rain is pretty heavy, right along I-37 between Pleasanton and down towards Corpus Christi. A little closer look here at uh, Seguin, still some light rain holding on, but that's starting to move away. And then Floresville, same story. A little heavier rain though, Carn City, in fact, quite a bit of lightning, that's electrical, so it's gonna be pretty loud there. This activity is slowly moving north, or south and east, I should say, dropping heavy rain along the way. And then there's that other cell, Fowlerton over to Tilden. That's where there is a good cluster of lightning strikes here. That tells us there's some very heavy rain there. Also moving off to the south and east. And checking in on Del Rio, just some light rain at the moment. What's uh, left over from a storm out there in Mexico bringing some light rain there into parts of Del Rio. But that should be winding down fairly soon. 
and it looks like we may get a little bit of a break in the action. The atmosphere gets a little worked over this morning, and then as we get into the afternoon, there could be some more showers and storms, mainly east of San Antonio, I think, today. Showers ending right now, cloudy skies out there, a few peaks of sun, and then storms east of I-35 this afternoon, as we mentioned, and then we'll be watching for some severe weather tomorrow, but more so on Tuesday. The threat is there. Temperatures right now 71 east southeast chilly winds at about eight miles per hour. 71 Holotus, 71 Randolph, 72 in New Braunfels, some 60s up in the hill country, 68 right now in Bandera, 70 degrees so spring, 72 with some light rain out in Del Rio. Here's the big picture, and we've got a piece of energy coming across the state, and that's helping to kick off some of these showers and storms this morning. With that energy still there, I, I think that we could get uh, a little bit more activity this afternoon and we can see that on water vapor still some moisture to play with behind this there's a bigger system out over california now this is going to be moving in on tuesday and this is what i think is going to help to kick off some severe weather tuesday afternoon forecast looks like this uh, four o'clock still shows some showers and storms east of i-35 also watch for a couple storms developing out in mexico some of those could get close to del rio eagle pass this evening uh, and then as we get into tomorrow this model doesn't show much, but if we were to get a storm tomorrow, it likely would go severe. The setup is there for that, so we'll keep a close eye on the radar. Don't think we'll see a whole lot, about a 20% chance, but as we get into Tuesday, we get some upper-level energy moving in, and this is where I think we can see some pretty strong storms. We'll be on the tail end of things, but if we are to get some storms on Tuesday, they'll likely be strong to severe, so that's something we want to watch. In addition, we're going to have to look out for heavy rain, too. A lot of rain with these storms. This is the rainfall potential over the next seven days. It does show three to five inches in some cases. Not everybody's going to see that much, but if we do see that even in pockets, it's going to cause some flash flooding. So that will be something that uh, we'll keep a close eye on. 40% chance of storms today, mainly east of I-35. Temperatures will be right around 81 degrees here in San Antonio. 88 tomorrow, 86 on Tuesday with a 70% chance of storms. Looks like we'll keep that going on Wednesday too. And maybe tapering off a little bit Thursday, but picking back up Friday, Saturday. So there is still not a day in our seven day forecast in which we do not have rain chances, guys. Jeez. All right. Very active forecast. Thank you, Justin Horn. 818, 71 degrees out. Well, still ahead, a celebrity auction benefiting impoverished children continues today. Details on the Janet Jackson items that are up for bid. And after the break, an Air Force pilot getting an unexpected surprise during the last flight of his military career. What he has to say about the heartwarming moment. Take a look at some of these lotto numbers. Pick three, one, zero, four, fireball seven, daily four, four, eight, two, three, fireball three. And your cash five, three, seven, 10, 1932, lotto Texas, eight, 15, 23, 24, 42, 44. Powerball 4, 10, 37, 39, 69. Powerball 24, power play 3. Did you win? No. Okay. Well, someone might have. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. We have a couple things that will warm you warm you up on the Sunday mornings, rainy Sunday morning for some people. Well, first up, Lieutenant Colonel John Dameron of South Carolina. The 20 year force pi Air Force pilot and father of three children was ready to take his final military flight before retiring this week. So he boarded the plane. But to his surprise, the person directing him in was his eight year old daughter, <laughs> Gabrielle. She carefully guided him in in his C-17 cargo plane with Captain Aaron Autobelli by her side. I was so glad my family and friends were able to be there and share it with me. So after dad came off that plane for the last time at Joint Base Charleston, his son Seth and Sullivan welcomed him home with an Air Force tradition being sprayed down by water hoses. So we want to wish John a happy and healthy retirement. Well, back here at home, the Comfort Cafe on Bandera near Northwest Loop 410 is providing comfort to some of those in our community. In more ways than one. Really an amazing story. It's on KSAT.com. If you haven't seen it yet, was reading it this morning, shared a note that workers received from a customer who was more than grateful for their service. The customer seemed to be going through a rough time, going through a hardship based on the context of the note, but said the cafe's food and welcoming environment left them in higher spirits. The note reads as follows. Thank you all for what you do for us, the crippled and the broken. Today was an extremely hard day for me. Got bad news last night 
As soon as I showed up, Matt welcomed us and the weight slash black cloud was lifted. Love radiates in this place and our community is infinitely better with you in it. My heart and belly is full. The cafe says this is just what they do to remind us we are all one in what seems like a divided world. And that is so amazing. I was reading the note on KSET.com. It's re I know, it's really good because- <laughs> look over Max at his desk. <laughs> well, because you know, there are so many times that are hard and it is really important to see community come together in those hard it's times. It's good to read good news stories. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, 825, 71 degrees out. Well, the tiger that disappeared in Houston last week has finally been captured. Still ahead in our next half hour, a look at new video of the animal and details on what comes next for it. Plus, the latest involving COVID and the mask guidance. The CDC making big news this week. So what Americans who are fully vaccinated now need to know. We're going to explain next. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Acosta. It's May 16th. Yesterday, we celebrated Max's birthday here on the show. Happy birthday again. Yeah, I you. appreciate you not saying the number. Yeah, it's good. We I will say, say <laughs> yesterday there was a lot of jokes. Oh, happy 21st birthday. People at home took that seriously <laughs> and reached out don't to me on, social, yourself, on social media <laughs> being like, are you really only 21? We don't need to no, get into that. No, He's not, but that's fine. <laughs> Apparently he also talks about himself in the third person. Either way, yesterday, rainy and some sunshine, Justin. What can we expect today? Oh, man. I uh, hope you had a good birthday, Max. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, a little bit of rain yesterday. We picked up some good numbers southwest of San Antonio. Seeing some more heavy rain now. In fact, we just now have a flash flood advisory coming out for Carnes County. Here's why. See that cluster of storms there moving to the south and east of San Antonio. That is where some heavy rain is falling this morning. A lot of lightning strikes with this too, so we know this is good heavy rain. Thankfully, no severe weather, but this will continue to work off to the south and east. Places like Beeville, you're going to get in on the rain probably within the next hour or so. Here in San Antonio, the rain is done. So if you're heading out the door now, you're, you'll be just fine. There's still some wet roads out there. Still a little bit damp in spots, but the rain generally moving out. Uh, still a few maybe very light showers down around Elmendorf. Uh, but the heavy stuff is now stretching from Carn City, Campbellton, Three Rivers over to Tilden. And that's where you could pick up a quick inch of rain out of this. I wouldn't be surprised. Temperature wise, we're in the 70s right now. 71 Randolph, 71 at the airport, 72 in New Braunfels. Still a lot of cloud cover in place at the moment. 60s up around Rock Springs. That's a cool spot. Rain chances this week, about a 40% chance today, mainly off to the east of San Antonio. Lower chance tomorrow, but Tuesday, 70% chance, 60% chance on Wednesday, and more chances as we finish out the week and go into next weekend. For today, 40% chance. Uh, 81, your high temperature, southeast Julie winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll talk more about what we're expecting early next week coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Well, now to the mounting confusion across the country following the CDC's new guidance that people who are fully vaccinated can ditch the mask, well, in most settings. At least 19 states now changing their mask mandates. ABC's Trevor Alt has the details. Celebration. Everybody's been waiting for this moment for a while now. And confusion. Should I take my mask off? Should I leave it on? It's super confusing. In the wake of the CDC's new guidance allowing fully vaccinated people to ditch the masks outdoors and indoors in almost every situation. We've all been in this lockdown for so long. Um, it still feels like a shock to transition to a new, a new normal. Many Americans feeling whiplash from rapid fire changes. At least 19 of the 24 states that had mask mandates now announcing plans to adopt the CDC guidance or scrap mask requirements entirely. And major chains like Walmart, Costco and Trader Joe's making masks optional for fully vaccinated shoppers. They're jumping the gun for sure. I mean, last week they tell you everybody must wear a mask and now two days later they're saying take off your mask. I don't trust any of it. Starbucks said it was keeping its full mask requirement. Now, just 24 hours later, they'll let fully vaccinated customers choose. But nearly two thirds of the country is not yet fully vaccinated. And businesses and the essential workers running them will be largely relying on an honor system. We didn't want to be the mask police. Uh, in the early portions of this pandemic, and we certainly don't want to be the vaccination police uh, at the end of it. 
And with kids under 12 still not eligible for the shots, parents like Fatima and Nicholas Diaz are taking extra precautions. If I'm going into a store, I'm wearing a mask. If I get out of my car, I'm wearing a mask. Is that for your own safety or is that to set an example for your son? Both. At a park picnic for Fatima's birthday, the parents weren't wearing masks, but three-year-old Caden was. Why do you wear your mask? Because we have to be safe. You have to be safe? Mm -hmm. And the CDC director is calling these mask guidance changes the first step. The agency will be using it as a framework as they re-examine their guidance in other areas for things like schools, daycare, summer camps, and even broader things like travel. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Well, here in the Alamo City, you will no longer be required to wear a mask if you visit SeaWorld or Aquatica. That is, if you are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. The changes come after the CDC eased its mask wearing guidelines. Park officials say the parks won't require proof of vaccination, but they are asking guests respectfully to comply with the new policy. Meantime, all park employees will be required to wear face masks. If you are not fully vaccinated, you will still need to wear a face mask when out in public and continue to socially distance. And speaking of proof, what happens if you lose your COVID vaccine card? A lot of questions a lot of people are asking. So right now on KSAT.com, we have an article that breaks down what you need to know if you lose the card and what you need to do. I mean, should you laminate it? Should you not? Just click on the link. There's a great story under the vaccine section. Well, meanwhile, the demand for blood continues to be high in San Antonio. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is especially in need of type O blood. A blood drive will be hosted Tuesday, May 25th from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Lifetime Fitness on Worth Parkway. It's in honor of Reggie Campbell, a husband and father who was a personal trainer and photographer. Reggie passed away on May 15th last year after battling leukemia. Donors can schedule a blood donation by calling that number on your screen you see there, 210-731-5590 or visiting SouthTexasBlood.org. In your morning headlines, a major train crash yesterday afternoon near Minneapolis. Union Pacific says 28 cars derailed next to Goose Lake. Two of the derailed cars are leaking hydrochloric acid, which can, can be toxic and cause severe chemical burns. A hazmat crew brought in just as precaution. Now, those living near the accident site are advised to remain indoors. So far, there have been no reports of any injuries. This is all according to the rail operator. The cause of the derailment still being investigated. Well, the operator of the nation's largest gas line pipeline that was hit with a cyber attack says it has resumed normal operations. The Georgia-based Colonial Pipeline began the process of restarting the pipeline's operations on Wednesday evening. The company warned it could take several days for the supply chain to return to normal. And back here in Texas, the nine-month-old tiger that disappeared in Houston for nearly a week has been found and is safe. The big cat named India being held at the city's animal shelter. Authorities say it appears unharmed. Now, remember, police released video of the animal yesterday shortly after it was located. The tiger's owner, also seen in that video, notified the shelter that she wanted to turn it in. The tiger will be relocated to a wildlife sanctuary later today. And you may need to adjust your commute if you're out and about in the Alamo City today. Several parts of Stone Oak Parkway closed for asphalt paving, according to TxDOT. You can find the full list of this weekend's traffic closures by TxDOT right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, the first annual Southside Book Fair kicks off today. It runs from 11 this morning until 3 this afternoon. It will showcase up to 20 award-winning authors from the Southside and throughout Texas. The authors will also be autographing and selling their books if you're interested in attending. The Book Fair will be hosted by Brewster's Backyard Ice House. It's located on 815 Pleasanton Road. All right, time now is 837, 71 degrees out. Well, Tim Duncan was inducted into the Hall of Fame last night. Yes, it was such an emotional moment for the entire class of 2020. Obviously, Tim Duncan's Hall of Fame. It has been decades in the making, and we saw some very familiar faces. I also have an inkling this is not going to be the last of that Spurs dynasty that we're going to see enter the Hall. We're going to hear from Tim Duncan and give you some highlights from the Suns game. Well, boy, it should have been a game from yesterday. It was a blowout. Surprise. Oh, <laughs> All right. Well, Chrissy Teigen, she's apologizing for harassing another celebrity oh. online. What she is now saying about her actions. Mm. 
And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. 71 degrees to start your Sunday morning. We had some wishy-washy rain yesterday, some sunshine too. So what is the rest of the day? What does the week look like? We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a bit. Trump versus Cheney, the battle for the GOP. Sunday, Liz Cheney, one-on-one. -on -one. Which side will win? Plus, vaccinated Americans tossing the mask. But key questions remain. The director of the CDC and the Powerhouse Roundtable on ABC's This Week. All right, got some pop news for you. Chrissy Teigen has apologized for harassing a then teenage Courtney Stoden online. Years ago, the model says, quote, not a lot of people are lucky enough to be held accountable for all their past. And I'm mortified and sad at who I used to be. I was insecure, attention seeking troll, end quote. Stoden says Teigen's harassment and that of many others came as she faced intense media criticism at the age of 16 for marrying 51-year-old Dutch Hutchinson in 2011. Janet Jackson's ensemble she wore in the Scream music video are among the items up for bid in a three-day auction. Her black circular bubble textured fabric long sleeve shirt, black patent leather pants, and black patent leather over the ankle boots sold for $125,000 yesterday. The auction called Iconic Treasures from the Legendary Career and Life of Janet Jackson will continue today the singer's 55th birthday. A portion of the proceeds will go towards the an organization that helps children escape from poverty. And some of the best TV shows in history wouldn't have been the same without the presence of great neighbors that helped make the main characters more complete. But who have been the best neighbors of all time on TV? Mm. Well, head to ksat.com right now. We have a list of our 10 favorites like Steve Urkel from Family Matters, well, Nona Woods in Good Times and Kramer from Seinfeld. We also <laughs> added Wilson in there from Home Improvement. <laughs> Be sure to comment at the bottom who your favorite TV neighbor is. All right, Coach Pop up in Springfield, Massachusetts last night for Tim Duncan's enshrinement into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Four starters for the Spurs are resting, so, you know, take that with you, Will. Spurs 140 to 103 loss to the Suns yesterday afternoon did not mean a lot for them in the long run already locked into the 10th seed in this year's play in tournament. The only question is who will they play will it be Golden State or will it be Memphis both those teams playing today and San Antonio will play the loser of that matchup in a win or go home game set for Wednesday. The Spurs need to win two games in the play in tournament to qualify for the playoffs. So how does the team feel about the challenge. We got two days off before we play which is uh, interesting. We haven't had that in a while. Uh, but, um, I mean, I'm looking forward to playing whoever we, we can play. Uh, you know, if it was any year before this, we wouldn't be playing on Wednesday. So I look, I look forward to the challenge. I like it, winner take all. We've got no pressure going into it. Um, I feel like anybody we play has um, more to lose than we do. And we got guys that are resting right now. So they'll be fully charged, uh, ready to go on Wednesday. I'm looking forward to it. All right, well, this is the moment we've been waiting for for decades. It is official Spurs legend Tim Duncan, a Hall of Famer, the latest from a franchise that has inducted the likes of David Robinson, George Gervin, and now Tim Duncan, five-time NBA champion, two-time league MVP, a memorable career at the center of this Spurs dynasty, retiring as arguably, I'll argue against anyone with this, the greatest power forward to ever play the game. Now his legacy enshrined forever in the Basketball Hall of Fame, along with the rest of 2020. The first people Timmy thanked in his speech, his parents. William and I own Duncan, um, a combined zero basketball knowledge. <laughs> but they taught me more about the game than anyone else. Um, you heard the mantra that my mom instilled in me, good, better, best, never let it rest to you, good is better, and your better is your best. They told me and made me uh, have pride in everything I did, be the best at everything I did, be happy with what your role is or where, where you are and try to be the best at that. And I'm here because of them. Now Duncan spread the love to his teammates throughout the speech, including the Admiral David Robinson. David actually presenting Duncan for enshrinement, but Duncan made special note of the dynamic duo you see right there on your screen. 
There we go. Manu and Tony sit in front row watching their buddy get inducted. And I imagine that we're going to be seeing them on the big stage in the coming years as well. So back to our Spurs right now. They have one more regular season le game left. That is today, 1 p.m. this afternoon. It was a really emotional night for everyone. I mean, you had Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, along with everyone else on that stage. And of course, Tim Duncan in that phenomenal speech. Ah, uh, so emotional. <laughs> Justin Orr, did you cry? A little bit. Uh, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> I, and I love Tim Duncan so much. Of course. It's so cool. Anyway, uh, let's talk a little bit about weather now. We've got some showers and storms pushing their way towards the Texas coast. This is some of our heavier rain that is uh, moving towards Beeville now. We're also got a good downpour taking place out in Howitzville. If you're watching us from out in Lavaca County, you're getting a good dose of rain this morning too. Here in San Antonio, the rain is clearing out. We still have some wet roads, but for the most part, the rain is ending. And I think we see a break in the action. The atmosphere is a little worked over, but as we get towards the afternoon, we'll probably see some more showers and storms develop. There's a look at how it's filled. That rain coming down along Highway 77 there, that's pushing north. Uh, no lightning strikes detected with that, but some good downpours for sure. The heaviest of the rain stretches from Tilden, just north of Three Rivers towards Carn City, or just south of Carn City, and then uh, back into eastern parts of Carnes County. And this is slowly making its way south and east, but it's dropping a lot of heavy rain as it does. So there are some flood advisories mixed in there. You could pick up a quick inch of rain, if not more, and that could cause some flooding in spots. Uh, the rain around Del Rio basically winding down now. Again, I think things quiet down out to the west, too. Here's some of the 24-hour rainfall estimates. We got some big numbers yesterday. Southern Medina County, even western parts of Bear County, up to two inches. And then some of those bigger numbers this morning with those showers and storms. Uh, adding on to what we saw yesterday, now showing around five inches estimated by the radar. So this is good rain, but we've got to watch out for the threat of some flooding. Here's a look at the time lapse. And we saw some of those showers and storms move through San Antonio this morning. Some lightning strikes, some thunder may have woken you up. 71 degrees right now. East Southeast Julie winds at about 8 miles per hour. And obviously the dew point is fairly high. 68 in Bandera, 69 Tarpley, but 70s elsewhere. 71 at Randolph, 72 in New Braunfels, 72 on Del Rio, 73 Catula, and 72 with rain coming down in Kennedy and dew points. There's a ton of moisture out there. We'll have no lack of moisture going forward. And so we'll see some more showers and storms in the forecast. A little piece of energy coming through Texas. And we can see it there on the visible satellite picture. That'll continue to push east today. That may help to kick off some more storms east of San Antonio this afternoon. So there's the first little disturbance. Uh, we've got another bigger one back off towards the west. And that's going to be pushing in on Tuesday. And that brings the concern for some severe weather. As we get that upper level support, uh, we could see some bigger storms uh, start to kick off out in West Texas and then work their way towards our direction. Let's first start with today, though. And this model does show by 4 o'clock showers and storms developing generally east of I-35. Uh, and then as we get into tomorrow, some mostly cloudy skies and then maybe some sun tomorrow afternoon. This model does not show much in the way of rain. But if we were to get a storm tomorrow, it could quickly become severe. So we'll still watch it closely. We put in a 20% chance of rain on Monday. Tuesday, here comes the better shot at storms, especially during the afternoon. We could see some strong to severe storms. Now, we will be on the tail end of things, I think, but uh, we still very well may be in the line of fire. So we're going to keep a close eye on Tuesday afternoon, too. On top of the severe threat, there is a threat for some heavy rain. Rainfall potential over the next seven days shows some big numbers, three to five inches in some cases. Not everybody will see that much, but uh, we have to watch that too. 81 degrees today, 40% chance of rain. Again, mainly east of I-35. And then we'll go 88 tomorrow, 20% chance of rain. 70% chance Tuesday, 60% chance Wednesday. And rain chances even continue into next weekend, guys. It's going to be one of those weeks where you just know there's going to be constant like trickle of mud and puddles when you walk in to keep a towel and your umbrella right by the doorway. Thank you, Justin. 850, 71 degrees out. Well, do you or someone you love still have questions about getting the COVID-19 vaccine? Tomorrow on GMSA, what a mental health advocate discovered that helped her overcome her fears. And before we head to break, I want to wish Hannah Ross a very happy birthday. 102 years young. Remember, you can post your birthday pictures, ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age, and you can see yours right here on GMSA.
A fatal crash forces authorities to shut down all lanes at Blanco and North Loop 1604 West early this morning. Here at the scene, we saw the body of the victim just a couple of feet in front of a white truck. The white truck had a lot of damage to the front end, but it's unclear exactly what led to the crash. The white truck has since been towed away. Investigators continued with taking measurements and surveying the area for any evidence that will help them piece this scene together. During our time here this morning, no driver was in sight and at this hour, still no information on who that fatal victim is. All we know is that one person died here on the scene and was transported to the medical examiner's office earlier this morning. As of right now, the scene has been cleared and the highway is open once again. Reporting on the city's north side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. And rain has come to an end here in San Antonio. Still watching some heavier storms, though, down to the south and east of town. Those will continue to work towards the Texas coast. And the extended forecast, 88 tomorrow, 86 on Tuesday with a 70% chance of storms. We'll see more chances throughout the week and into next weekend, guys. All right. Justin Horn, thank you so much for joining us today. Glad to be here. Yeah, happy to have you on Sunday. Thanks. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Try to stay dry. Have a good Sunday.